Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to look at a few different types of subsystems in Simulink. Uh, you all know there is a standard subsystem, which is basically an organizing folder. So you have some inputs to the subsystem, some outputs, and uh, some blocks. And this is, by the way, called the virtual subsystem. So uh, here you see i got rid of the input i created a sine wave with amplitude one frequency one sample time 0.01 and there is no input so just output send it out with show it on this oscilloscope right and my uh, running time is infinity because i wanted to keep running now this is the standard one when you click run the content of it will run regardless but there are some scenarios in real life or in simulations that you don't want the content of a subsystem to run continuously. You want them to run under specific conditions. For instance, when something happens, you want it to uh, basically start. For such scenarios, we can use enable system, trigger subsystems, and function calls and resettables. So let's take a look at these four different types of subsystems, which are more specialized. And they have priorities and orders. So enable subsystem. For that, you need this uh, subsystem. And again, all of these are under Simulink and under ports and subsystems. So when you go there and you go to here, you should be able to find the enabled and and there is one that is called enable and trigger but here is the enable subsystem and if you go in it there is in out and there is this uh, enable block here right so this will work as uh, long as this signal sent to the enable is a non-zero signal so it doesn't have to be one necessarily. As long as that is a non-zero, it will work. So right now it's a zero, so nothing inside of it works, but this constant is connected to this toggle switch. So when I click on this, that becomes one. So the content of it will be executed and will be sent to the oscilloscope, right? So here with this toggle switch, I can run this system or not run it. And what is it that it's doing? It's the same thing, it's a sine wave right so it will either send the sine wave out to the scope or doesn't depending on whether i turn this toggle switch on or off and if you don't want that this signal can be anything very complicated from your other calculations right so it doesn't need to be as simple as this here is just for the sake of learning and learn about the how the system works not necessarily make it very complicated so if i run this for you let's go ahead and run you'll see that if I click on this oscilloscope block, it is going to show the sine wave all the time, but not this one. This one will not do the same thing. It will only show it when this toggle switch is turned on. Okay, so let's click on this scope and take a look and see what this scope has. You see, that is this scope too. You see it's constantly creating that right but now if i do a similar thing with this scope it should not do anything you see it's just zero but look here i just click on this and look at it again there we go did you see it jumped from zero to sine wave just because i turned it on now look here if i turn it off look it goes back to zero again does it go back to zero that's the question no, not necessarily. It doesn't go back to zero in this case. It stays at negative 0.4 something. So it doesn't mean when you turn it off, the output of it will go to zero. Why is that? Let's see why. If you go back here and click on this, you'll see that states when enabled, the states is going to be held. Now, there is another option under this enable, and that is reset. Now, if I reset it, does it mean that the output goes to zero? No, because it doesn't know that the states are necessarily started at zero. The output in the system, in the subsystem, is not the same as state. Okay, so do not expect if you reset this, 
that is going to send back the output to zero because the output again in this system is not the same as the state. Now, if you had the state space system, a state space of block, and the output was set equal to the states, then the states will be reset to whatever they were initially, which is maybe zero if you did it. And so the output can also go to zero. But just keep in mind that it just keeps the state here held and uh, basically when you turn this on or off the values are going to stay at that number so this is enable again it will work when the input to it is a non-zero number now there is another scenario called trigger subsystem what is trigger so it's similar to enable but this time the content of the subsystem will be executed when it receives a trigger signal now what is a trigger signal so here the goal of it is to generate a random number and send it out but what is the trigger here so here it looks at the input signal and checks whether the input signal in this case is rising so if you have a step type behavior, right, if you have a signal that is at some value and then jumps to another value or is increasing, so it receives a step up or rising, in that case, the system will be activated. So if it, let's say, goes from zero to one or something, now is that the only scenario? No, you can change it to falling if you want. So if it was at one and drops to zero, again, the system will be triggered or it could be either. So it doesn't care that it goes up or down. In both cases, it will be triggered. It could be a, mes a message or it could be a function call. Now I'll show you the function call separately, but here we're gonna uh, look at the rising and Anytime the signal receives a rising uh, or a positive edge, we call a positive edge, it will be triggered. Now, how do I create that with the push button? So I have created the push button. And when I click on this push button, that number goes from zero to one because that's how I set this push button. And so it jumps from zero to one. So it receives a step type behavior. And so you'll see that this guy is going to show me zero until I click on this push button. Then it will show the random number that is being generated. So let me go ahead and run it for you. You see right now it's not showing anything. But as soon as I click on this, you see, it shows the number. And if you click on it again, it should change the number. So let's see. You can click on this there we go you see whenever i click on this it changes to one the number changes and then that state is being held let's see if i can do it there we go so you see this is a trigger system so it's not looking for a string a stream of basically non-zero or zero values it looks at changes in the input as opposed to the number the value of the input so enable subsystem will be triggered by the value of the input, whether they are non-zero or zero. Triggered will look at the changes in the input, like if a button is pushed, if a connection is basically, uh, if a switch is connected or not connected, right? So it looks at the changes in the signal. That's the difference. Now, the third type of subsystem is called the function call subsystem. What is this one? Let me stop this so we can look at it. So here I'm creating a random integer between 0 and 9, right? Because it's 10 minus 1, basically the maximum number. It is being sent to a function call subsystem. And anytime if it receives a function call, this one, anytime it receives, you see, trigger type, I said I'm going to explain it to you, rising, falling, either, now there is a function call. Anytime it receives a function call, then it will basically uh, be triggered and it is going to uh, keep the state in the same values when it is being executed. So here I'm re creating a number random integer between zero to nine. I'm sending it into this system to take the square root of that and send it out to the display. Good. 
but it only happens when this uh, function call block, this is another block called function call generator. When this function call generator generates a function call, so this signal is a function call, that will trigger the system and activate the system. So what is this block? So it has a sample time of one and the number of iterations. So every basically one second, this one, this block will generate uh, one function call. And every one second, this uh, system will be executed. So the random integer will be taken a square root of it and will be shown on the display. Let me show you that. Look, you see? Zero, three, mm, five, I guess, nine, three, five, something like that. Okay, so these random numbers are being generated and uh, four, six, and so on. And then uh, their square root every one second is being calculated because this is... Now you might say, is that the only way to create a function call? No. This is not the only way to create a function call. Here is just for simplicity. This is the simplest thing to create a function call. In reality, the best thing for this is why would you use a function call? Right? Why would you? Because you might say instead of this function call, the way you did it, I can create one of these trigger subsystems, right? Or a, an enable system, and I pass it a pulse with a frequent, a, a rectangular pulse with a frequency of one. That will do the same thing. That's right. But this is more complicated. Here is the content of this function call could be very complicated. It cannot necessarily just come from the simple block. It can come actually from a simulink function or a state flow chart. And based on the outputs of a simulink function or a state flow chart, this um, function call be generated. Okay? So it could be very complicated calculations. And when those calculations are done, then the signal is generated. So it can completely control the number and the frequency and the times that the executions are in, within this uh, subsystem are to be done. Not at the specific number or frequency. It could be done, as I said, with a simulink function. So you can bring a simulink function, right? And we know how to create simulink functions. We just go to user defined functions and we should be able to create simulink functions or S functions and so on. So one of them is this guy, a simulink function. The other one is S function. And the other one is a state flow chart, which is under state flow. So if you go to the state flow, you can bring a chart. And so with these three, you can basically create this signal under your control with whatever mechanism, whatever code that you want. Okay, so you can make this as complicated as you want. Here, I just made it extremely simple, but you can make it as complicated as you want. So this is like a more general form of these two. And finally, we have the uh, reset subsystem. What is that? So a resettable subsystem is the one that will reset the output when it receives a, an on signal. So here I'm controlling this constant with a slider switch. Whenever I turn it on, it becomes one. Whenever I turn it off, it becomes a, a zero. You can see that here. And uh, if it receives a one, it will be triggered to reset. So as soon as it receives a rising signal, it will reset the output. And the output here is simply some of the numbers are starting from one. So we receive one and then keep going, one, two, three, keep going up, correct? And just show that summation over here. But when I turn it on, it will be reset and it starts from one again and go up. Okay, so remember in this uh, system that the output was not necessarily go back to zero because 
the states are different than output. In this system, you can send the output to zero or to whatever you want, reset it. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, of course, I need to get rid of this S function thing because it needs some settings that I have not provided. So let's take a look. Okay, now look here. You see, it's going up. And you might say, why is it that it's jumping by uh, tens instead of ones? That's because of the sample time here. Because sample time is 0.1 here. So every one second, there are tens of samples, and in each sample, this will be going up by one. So 10 samples means going up by 10. That's why you see it jumps up by 10, not by one. Now you see it's going up, right? Now look here. You see? Jumps to zero. Immediately after one second, jump to 10. It resets. Now when I go off, nothing happens because I said only on rising uh, values, go ahead and reset it. You see? So it only resets on changing it from 0 to 1. Now, if I want to go back, make it from 1 to 0, also reset it, then I have to go back here and say, well, uh, during execution, reset it, or only rising, or either, right? So here I say either. Now, uh, with either, it doesn't matter whether I do on, off, or off, on, it should reset. Okay, so here you see it's going up now i go off it should reset as well this time there we go i go on it should reset again that is either so hopefully you learn something new you learned uh, subsystems that can run when you want them to run when you send them a non-zero value when you send them a positive or negative edge or both when a function is called or you can send their outputs back to reset or to zero value basically reset them if something happens if they receive a non-zero value so these are very useful for event-based system as opposed to just time-based systems like a standard subsystem and these are the type of subsystems which you can turn into a non-virtual subsystem and in non-virtual subsystems, the orders of the execution do matter. And so for running them, you need more memory and more time. But that is a topic of a separate video. If I have time, I'll talk about that and atomic subsystems and so on. So I just wanted you to know about these. Hopefully it was useful to you. I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.